There's merit in wanting to increase your privacy on your Android phone, and one of the best ways to do so is with a custom ROM like Graphene OS. Is it worth it? Well, here's everything you need to know. Before I get into graphing though and sink my teeth into it, become a legend and subscribe to the channel today. It's good for you, it's good for me, and it's a fun time all around. Don't waste any more time and join the best Android community on the internet. You know what to do, hit that subscribe button to join the channel. So who is Graphene OS for? Well, if you want true privacy first, full control over your Android smartphone, Graphene OS is one of the best options that you probably see anywhere. The reason that Graphene is not used by lots of people though is the privacy isn't profitable. Lineage OS 21 is another solid alternative that we've reviewed here on the channel to the stock Android experience, but it lacks some of the refined privacy controls that Graphene OS actually prides itself on offering. While the average person isn't likely to be targeted in the same way as someone like Edward Snowden, his seal of approval for Graphene is huge for privacy advocates. Google Mobile Services is not packaged here as standard, it's a bundle that includes popular apps like the Play Store, Gmail, Maps, and more if you're wondering what that is. And while you can ditch Google entirely, Graphene actually allows you to sandbox every single app on your phone. And this is where the true power comes from, from a privacy perspective. This actually isn't possible on most Android phones, as any Google applications still have unrestricted access right from that initial setup phase. Installing this custom ROM is really super easy as well. You can use the Chrome browser like that of the Android Flash tool, something we've talked about a lot here on the channel. All you have to do to get ready is enable USB debug on your device plus OEM unlocking, and you're basically ready to plug into your PC or Mac. The web installer requires a few button presses for you to un unlock the device bootloader and download the latest Graphene OS factory images and flash to your phone. Relock the bootloader and basically you're ready or good to go that is. One thing to note is that to get started, if you're having problems, you'll actually need to put your phone into fast boot mode for the web installer to recognize that your phone is connected. That's something I found when I going through this myself. I thought I was a bit of an idiot, but it actually was a super simple process. Really enjoyed doing this as it was made things a heck of a lot easier than some other custom ROMs. The best thing with Graphene OS is that you can return to a stock OS build, but it will mean that you'll need to remove that non-stock Android verified boot key first. This is also possible from the web installer, so no need to stress and no need to worry. From here, the Android Flash tool can get you back to stock if you do need to. One downside is that Graphene OS only actually supports Google Pixel phones and devices that actually receive regular security updates. So older Pixel phones, you may be able to get Graphene on your phone, but you won't be supported at least into the future. And these phones also come with regular security patches as well. So it is something to be made aware of if you are very focused on privacy. The thing about it is that maybe a problem is that other phones from other manufacturers simply don't work here. So you might want to try another third party ROM if you are looking for that extra privacy and security with a Samsung phone, for instance. One of the most significant differences is the absence of pre-installed Google apps and services on Graphene by default. This means it comes clean of any Google software, reducing the amount of data that Google can collect about your activity and minimizing potential attack vectors for hackers out there. However, if you do rely on certain Google applications, the best thing here is that Graphene OS allows you to install a sandboxed version of Google Play. This sandbox restricts Google Play's access to the system, offering a compromise between functionality and privacy. And that's why I really wanted to try this out for myself. Beyond the core system modifications, Graphene OS also offers enhanced permission controls. And unlike stock Android, you have granular control over what data each app can access. This includes the ability to restrict an app's access to the internet, sensors like your microphone or location, or even specific folders on your device's storage. Graphene OS also features per connection MAC address randomization, changing device ID to me and you, making it even more difficult to track your device across different Wi-Fi networks. Additionally, pin scrambling adds another layer of security by making it harder for someone to guess your pin by observing your finger movements on your screen. When you want to use the internet, the Vanadium browser replaces Chrome with a hardened fork of Chromium and offers a more secure browsing experience. It's visually pretty good too. For added protection, it is recommended though that with Graphene, you use an always connected VPN. This is optional, but it is worth it for added protection and peace of mind. And a popular recommendation from the community of Graphene OS users appears to be Proton VPN, at least in my cursory glances, which I do actually need to test out here too. Of course, another key application that is optional is that sandboxed version of Google Play. As I mentioned earlier, this lets you access applications that rely on Google Play services for functionality, but with stricter limitations on data access for a reduced attack surface for those potential security threats. 
Restricting its access means that your system has greater privacy controls to use popular Google services without making personal data part of that user transaction. There's improved user profiles, which allow for more user profiles than stock Android with the ability to end sessions for additional security. By default, you can block apps from having network access in Graphene as well. Often lots of Android applications will ask you for this permission without any real need to connect to an outside network. So it's nice to have that as well. When you enable storage scopes for an application, it behaves as if it has full storage access. I love this feature because by default, the app can only see its own files and folders created by itself. It cannot see any files or folders created by other apps on your device. This is perfect for services like Instagram and Meta-based products, which seemingly want to access all your photos for no specific reason. All of these functions just help prevent malicious access to your on-device data. And I'm only really scratching the surface here as well. Unique applications also come bundled with Graphene OS. It doesn't just change that system under the hood as you probably would have expected. Those unique apps are designed to keep your information safe. Instead of Chrome, Graphene OS uses Vanadium, as I mentioned, as your web browser. Vanadium is like a tougher version of Chrome built from the same basic parts, but with all of the unnecessary features and tracking tools stripped out of it. This makes Vanadium a more secure option for browsing the web. Graphene OS also deliberately avoids the standard AOSP camera for privacy and security reasons. It's modified not to collect location data as standard, and although I will say it's a fine application, it lacks a lot of features that can truly take advantage of a Pixel camera system. For many, I think a modified Gcam build might be a better replacement. Imagine the Auditor application as a digital security guard for your device. It uses special hardware features to confirm that the operating system is authentic on your device or another device that you plug in and hasn't been compromised by unauthorized note modifications. This can be really helpful if you're concerned about potential tampering or want to ensure that your device's software integrity is unscathed. Graphene OS also includes mostly stock AOSP apps with zero modifications, which means they're basic but functional. Like on most Android phones, all of these can be replaced though as per your requirements, which is really nice. The gallery application is super basic and just offers a way for you to view media. And the UI is straightforward to say the least, I will say that. The PDF viewer is just that, a simple PDF viewer. The stock AOSP clock app is pre-installed with all of the core functions included, including timers, all that kind of jazz. The calculator is yet another stock AOSP app that just lets you perform calculations with a basic scientific calculator also bundled in. Sadly, there is no support for RCS with the default SMS or messaging application, but this is fine for basic texting and it does accept MMS as well. The dialer is a simple AOSP app to start calls and stay connected. The, th the problem I have with contacts is that because it has zero Google connections, it means you'll need to import a VCF file or manually add your contacts. So that's just something to know if you are going to use this over Google contacts or another option. Files is for basic file management tasks like copying, moving, renaming and deleting files on your device. It does that really well without any extra bells and whistles. I think visually everything feels like you remember on a pixel. Material use here as is dynamic color. Not everything is present though, making graphene feel a little like Pepsi to the regular pixel Coca-Cola flavor. It's good, it's just slightly different. I found myself really liking the experience despite a few things seemingly feeling out of place, but there are many things that I'm missing entirely from what I'm used to, that is. So since Graphene OS doesn't come with any Google applications, it means that you'll need to explore external app stores or get APK files directly and sideload them manually. One of the best options is the F-Droid, and F-Droid focuses on free and open source software that aids your user privacy. Here are some popular options that you might find useful. If you still need some Google Play apps, the Aurora Store lets you download them anonymously without needing a Google account. Newpipe is a popular YouTube alternative, letting you watch videos without ads and even download them for offline viewing, giving you more control over how you watch your videos. K9 Mail is a solid alternative to Gmail, offering more control over your email accounts and potentially therefore improving user privacy. Personally, I prefer ProtonMail, but this is a good option as well. Signal or Briar are messaging applications that use encryption to keep your conversation secure, making them a safer choice than regular texting applications. OSMAND is an open source navigation application that works fully offline, making it a good alternative to Google Maps if you value privacy and don't need live traffic updates. Plus you can use this offline, which makes it a really invaluable tool when you're traveling. Those are just a few examples and the choice of alternative apps will depend on your specific needs. However, using Graphene OS often involves embracing alternative app ecosystems like F-Droid, as I mentioned, 
which offers a wider range of the all-important privacy focus options. There are some trade-offs to consider here, and overall it's easy to see that Graphene OS prioritizes security and privacy over actual user convenience. It offers a more lockdown environment, ideal for users who value or want to control their data and want to minimize potential security risks, but I must admit that's not gonna be for everyone. Without Google Play services pre-installed, some apps might not function as intended, and the core app lineup is fairly small right out of the gate. That's a strength and a weakness in a lot of ways though. I will say installing and using Graphene OS is very easy, but it still requires a little bit more technical know-how than the actual user-friendly Android pr builds pre-built and installed on your Pixel phones that you don't actually need to mess around with. Android Auto support has only just arrived, but it is welcome after being touted as coming in late 2023. I will say that's great news and it's really good to see Graphene now working in vehicles. One big one though is that NFC payments using services like Google Pay and Google Wallet are not actually available. However, there are some good, there is some good news here as some bank applications will allow you to make contactless payments, but this isn't the case for all financial institutions. It's likely gonna be a bit of trial and error in that case, I'm afraid. One final thing I would note is that while you're unlikely to flash this ROM to improve performance, it's really smooth and offers a seamless Android experience on Pixel hardware, despite cutting out what are huge chunks of the UI that some of you might have become accustomed to. My take is that it feels familiar enough that it's actually worth the trade-offs and perfect if you want an OS that is set up to make your phone feel secure and privacy conscious. Sadly, I will say Graphene OS is only available for selected Pixel hardware. It's weird as that might seem. I'd highly recommend it though to anyone seeking a custom ROM with a little bit more under the hood control. And although it is hard to suggest for a random person or a random person to flash it, there is a growing clamor for more privacy focused Android builds and it does hit that really well. I think Graphene does that without hindering the hardware in your pocket. If you'd like to get started or learn more about the project, then you will find links in our video description. While this is not a true deep dive, there are some solid resources or solid list of resources out there that I'll drop in the same place for you to check out. I do hope you enjoyed this fairly surface level intro into Graphene OS, but until next time, thanks for watching and I will speak to you later.